So hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Fabio Zund, I'm from ETH in Zurich. I'm a PhD student in computer science and I'm working in the computer graphics lab. <clears throat> I should probably stay here with the microphone. I will um, explain to you about the pervasive game, gaming platform. As Peter already uh, introduced, um, it is divided into three structures. And I will give a few um, examples each. So first we have the consumer products um, structure, it, which is toy based. It is um, played on a, for example, on a table or in a, in a small room. Here on this um, example, you see there's a, a toy house and another kid is looking through his device, through his tablet or, or phone, and he sees characters come to life in the other real um, house. And so can, can play a game, a, uh, you know, an entertaining game. The location-based installation example here is in front of a cinema. This could be a poster of, let's say, Iron Man here. And when you point your tablet at Iron Man, he comes to life and he maybe speaks to you or he tells you, go watch this movie. And the citywide gaming uh, scenario is the last one, the one we're actually working right now. Um, here we want to target multiple people playing at the same time in the whole city. So this would involve moving from one place to another in the city to achieve certain goals. Um, as with the other uh, platforms, we create these uh, called specific enablers. These are basically software components and they allow for spe special effects. And if you're a game developer, it could be a student or also a professional game developer, you can use them download them and integrate them into your game to, to create special effects. These uh, enablers are already tested with by now over 1500 users. Here you see um, from a computer graphics conference and here you already see the first specific enablers is called the fast feature tracking. You see this blue, it's called a blimp. It's actually a balloon, a remote controlled balloon. It's a, it's a helicopter that can fly around and the game here, or actually this, this component, can track this blue blimp in the sky, and then you can build a game around it. For example, the game they played here is Sky Wars. Um, this means wherever the, the blue blimp is, there will be evil red spaceships spawned. Let me play the video. And then when you have an iPhone, you can just go to the store, download the game, point at the, at the blue blimp, and then you control the blue ships and you have to fire at the, at the red ships to destroy them. This will look about like this. So this, all these demos that I show are just you know, demos to, to show what you could do with these components. Okay, the, the next um, specific enabler is the reflection mapping enabler. I think Peter already showed this image. The idea here is that you want to add uh, a virtual character into a picture that you took from a real ob object. For example, the woman on the right side is standing in front of the Brave poster, and when you take the picture, this bear from Brave will automatically be introduced to this picture. Now, the important thing here is that you want to apply the same lighting condition to this bear as you have in the real scene, um, which is kind of hard to do. To do this, we, you see in the background, you have these two spheres. One is a reflective sphere that captures the reflectivity of the room, and the other one is just a white one that captures the, the light direction and color. So in the end, this bear has exactly the same lighting condition as the woman, and this gives a lot of realism. Um, this enabler is also used in, in the game. In this game, the augmented resistance game, you can also play at our booth. You see this, this also this little sphere here in the middle captures the light. You can see now he's moving the, the light and you can see how the light also changed in the virtual, sh in the virtual scene. Um, in the same game, we also have the leaderboard enabler, which is a very simple enabler, but very powerful because you can, it's really a small piece of code that you can add to your game, and then you have a, a high score that you can see also online, and everyone who, who plays your game can submit a high score, and then this basically allows everyone to keep, compete with, with each other. Um, 
This enabler is a synchronization enabler. It means that for all multiplayer games, you have to synchronize your game content, for example, characters. Um, this is the spider demo. You can also play it in our booth. And here you have the same spider for all um, players at the same time, physically correct, simulated by a server. But then every player can fire rockets at the spider from, from wherever he's standing. And so here the trick is you want to synchronize all the rockets among all players. This is a new demo we're working on now. Um, it is a, it's called the dragon demo. It's a dragon. You can fly this dragon by, you can see it in the right. It's, you just connect. You can move your hands to steer and to, to flap the wings. And here we will also integrate the, um, the synchronization enabler so multiple players can play at the same time. So this is an example. Maybe there's a game studio who has already this game and it's working, but it wants to add some functionality like multiplayer. Then they can just go to this, um, to the website, download our, our enabler and more or less plug it in. <laughs> um, this enabler is also about reality. One problem you have when you have augmented reality apps is that as you move the camera, if you move it very quickly, the background image is very blurred. Depends also on the lighting condition. And then, as you see on the left side, you can clearly distinguish the, the, the real world with the, or from the virtual world. And so what we do here is we analyze the image and we apply the same blur to the, the, these virtual characters. So they blend a lot better to the background. Um, as Dirk already mentioned, all our code is um, on GitHub. It's open source MIT license. We have lots of documentation on how to use these components and how to integrate them. Um, just recently, we organized a hackathon in Zurich, and there were two others, one in Barcelona and one in, in Adnem, a um, total of 100 developers. And this was a great opportunity for us to have students and professional game developers test our, our, um, our code. So we had students from ETH in Zurich, but also from the um, Zurich Art School and some professional uh, Swiss game developers that tested. Basically, they, the idea was in one game, make in one day, make one game. And, but they, they were encouraged to use our specific enablers, and they did. Here is a video from the Zurich Hackathon. Let me see. Maybe you can mute the sound so I can quickly explain. So one team, this team, made an a augmented reality table soccer. It means that you can move around your, your tablet to control the players, and you will, you will play together. Of course, I have to say, at the hackathon, you cannot make a huge, polished, nice game, but it's very interesting to just make a, a prototype and see how it reacts, how players can play with it. Uh, this team made um, a cat. It's a, a virtual pet. So this cat you have to feed with a marker. You can see you can move the marker to feed her, or you can um, add another marker, which represents a ball, and, and you can play with her. This team made a, a block stacking game. So you have ships. Every, every player has a ship. And with the tablet, you have to pick up a block and move it onto your ship and make sure it doesn't fall off, which is actually very tricky. Also, the first prize winner made a block stacking game. Here, you don't have ships, but you just have to make a tower, which is as high as possible. And this is a very nice example because this is a game that really makes sense with in AR. Um, many games are a lot more harder in AR, and then it, it's not fun. But this game is actually kind of made for AR. So that was a nice example. This again, the, the games. And yes, so we have another competition right now, the Dare to be Digital. It's an online competition this time, and you can still register or submit. And yes, so now we're targeting citywide games. We have, uh, actually, I have a few students working on, on demonstration projects. Citywide gaming means, you know, you have to play throughout the whole city. For example, you can imagine um, a treasure hunt. You have to go to some part of the city. There you get new clues, which lead you to another part of the city. And so multiple people can play together the same ga game and have to walk around. That's it. Um, here are some more logos and links. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>